Hello, Theodore Shubot here, giving you guys another message that you will not hear at church. I guarantee that. Just yesterday, Obama made a deplorable speech condemning the Crusades and condemning the beautiful history of Christendom. Uh, I won't even give this speech the privilege of being called stupid. I would not call it stupid, for it was not stupid. It was purposefully deceptive. It was purposefully and deliberately attacking the Crusades and everything it stood for. The Crusades uh, were a military, uh, a military mission, a military aspiration consisting of great holy war to fight and destroy jihadism and the onslaught of Islam against Christians and the Christian faith. And what does Obama do in the speech? He goes uh, talking bad about ISIS in a very weak-mannered way, of course. And he then diverts the subject to Christianity. Play the clip. We see faith driving us to do right. But we also see faith being twisted and distorted, used as a wedge, or worse, sometimes used as a weapon. From a school in Pakistan to the streets of Paris, we have seen violence and terror perpetrated by those who profess to stand up for faith, their faith. Profess to stand up for Islam, but in fact are betraying it. We see ISIL, a brutal, vicious death cult that, in the name of religion, carries out unspeakable acts of barbarism, terrorizing religious minorities like the Yazidis, subjecting women to rape as a weapon of war, and claiming the mantle of religious authority for such actions. We see sectarian war in the murder of Muslims and Christians in Nigeria, religious war in the Central African Republic, a rising tide of anti-Semitism and hate crimes in Europe, so often perpetrated in the name of religion. So how do we, as people of faith, reconcile these realities? The profound good, the strength, the tenacity, the compassion and love that can flow from all of our faiths, operating alongside those who seek to hijack religious for their own murderous ends. Humanity has been grappling with these questions throughout human history. And lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place. Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. In our home country, slavery and Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. Look at the way that Obama is saying this. I mean, when he, in the beginning of the speech, when he's first... Uh, when he begins talking about ISIS, the way he says it, you can always tell if somebody is putting their heart into something by the tone of the voice, by the eyes, just by the sheer disposition of the person in his countenance and also in his voice, the connotation that's coming out from his voice. And look at the way he says it. He's like, and there's ISIS, and they're fighting for their religion, subjecting women. I mean, it's so frozen, it's so rigid, it's so uh, stiff. He's, talk, he's like a robot. It's like he's reading out of, a, out of a screen somewhere. And the only reason why he's talking about ISIS is because if he doesn't, he's going to look like a weak president. He's going to look like the weak-mannered president that he is. And, of course, it's going to reveal his Islamic religion. We all know it's quite obvious um, don't act like it's don't act like it's not conspicuous. Obama is a Muslim, and he does not want uh, to harshly and with and with spirit condemn his fellow Muslims. He's only going to condemn them as a means of looking good. It's a means to propaganda, and 
his real enemy is the Christian faith. The ones who he really hates are the Christians. Make no mistake about it. There is no reason to bring up the Crusades in this issue, especially if you're an educated person. Obama is not a stupid person. He is educated. And he knows uh, that the problem is Islam. He knows that the threat against civilization is Islam. And yet he redirects it to something that happened in Christianity's great, beautiful history. And he goes on talking about how the Crusades are really just no different than ISIS. Well, Mr. President, I'm going to tell you right now that you are plain, being plain damn deceptive. We are going to talk a little bit on this video uh, on the Crusades. The Crusades was a religious war. There is no doubt about that. But so what? What is wrong with fighting for your religion? Tell me. What is wrong with fighting for your religion? The Hebrews, when they invaded uh, Canaan and slaughtered all the pagans, fought for their religion. When the 11 tribes of Israel went against the, uh, the tribe of Benjamin because it protected homosexuals and defended a horrific crime done by homosexuals of their tribe, uh, the 11 tribes of Israel slaughtered and almost annihilated the entire tribe of Benjamin. They fought for their religion. When King Hosea purged the land of heathenism and witchcraft, he fought for his religion. When Elijah slaughtered the prophets of Baal, he fought for his religion. When Jehu slaughtered Jezebel and the rest of the Baal worshippers in his country, he fought for his religion. When Moses fought against the Amalekites, as we read in the book of Numbers, he fought for his religion. When he slaughtered the worshippers of the golden calf, he fought for his religion. When King Hezekiah purged the land of heathenism, he fought for his religion. When uh, Deborah was calling the nation of Israel, when, you, when she called uh, 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 Barak, not Barak Hussein Obama, Barak, the warrior of God, to fight against the Canaanites, they as well were fighting for their religion. The Bible is filled with people fighting for their religion. When Jesus Christ himself took out a cat of nine tails and went in there and kicked ass and beat up the crooked uh, merchants in the temple and stood in the temple for hours and hours preventing with violence, with the use of force, those who wanted to sell in the temple, he was fighting for his religion. So, Jesus Christ himself, a person who Obama claims to follow, fought for his religion. He fought for his father. As the Gospel of John says, the zeal for my father's house eateth me up. So there's nothing wrong for fighting for your faith. Uh, this is why I say the Second Amendment is the superior amendment of the U.S. Constitution. You may have the freedom to worship your God and observe your religion, but what are you going to do when the state begins to persecute your religion? With the Second Amendment, I have the freedom to fight for my religion if the state so uh, pleases or so desires to persecute my religion and oppress my religion. And the Crusades was just that, people defending their religion. Not only that, but they were fighting to perpetuate uh, their religion. Uh, there was a, uh, a squire by the name of Ernul, and this is what he said in one of his writings on the Templars. He said, We have left our lands and our friends to come here, Jerusalem, the Holy Land, and establish and extend God's law. So the Crusades was a religious war. They wanted to extend God's law. In the Latin rule of 1129, it says that the Templar knights strived for, quote, the spreading of the true faith. And in the same book, it specifies the mission of the Templars as, quote, to wipe the enemies of Christ from the Holy Land. So it was indeed a religious war, and also religious war, or fighting to spread Christianity, uh, was even before the Crusades. St. Gregory the Great, uh, a, a, much, a, a pope who, was, who existed and ruled much earlier uh, than the Crusades, a much er earlier time than the Crusades, said, wrote a letter to the Byzantine general Gennadios. And this is what he said to, the, to, uh, to Gennadios. He said, and report goes that it is not from a desire of shedding blood that you constantly court these wars, but for the sake of extending the republic in which we see that God is worshipped to the end that the name of Christ may be spread abroad through subject nations 
by preaching of the faith. So fighting to expand Christianity, to expand the preaching of Christianity, has been a part of Christian history, an intricate part of Christian of Christian history. And I'm not denying that. But you know what? So what? This is something that we as Christians should be proud of. And I see all these uh, Christians, you know, going to uh, responding to what Obama is saying, and they are exclaiming, "Oh, that's not what Christianity is about! How dare you bring Christians, or how dare you associate Christians with the Crusades? That's not what we're about." Instead of defending ourselves, or instead of trying to uh, weasel your way out of the Crusades, or disassociate yourself with it which is really what the devil wants, what the enemy wants. They want us to break in fear at the very uh, sound of the word crusade. Instead of doing all that and giving the enemy strength and confidence and boosting their morale, we should break their spirit down by just looking, looking at these people and saying, so what? So what if Christians went into the Holy Land and killed heretics? So what if we had the Inquisition? So what if Christians went into, let's say, southern France and butchered thousands of heretics. So what? The Muslims were trying to defend their religion by slaughtering Christians. They went in there in the name of their religion and began to butcher thousands of Christians throughout the Middle East, hundreds of thousands of Christians throughout the Middle East. And really what the Muslims were doing before the First Crusade in the, that was commenced by Pope Urban II in the late 11th century was pretty much no different than ISIS. So you had a medieval version of ISIS going into the Middle East, butchering, raping, destroying churches, defecating on churches, desecrating holy sites, and the Crusades came to fight against ISIS. The Muslims of the, of the, and that were living in the times of the Crusades, they were no different than ISIS. And here come the Crusades to fight ISIS. The Crusades came to destroy people who were no different than the Muslims of ISIS. So, Mr. President, if I can call you that, Mr. Obama, the Crusades were fighting against people who you are not really fighting against. The Crusades were fighting against Muslims who you today support. The Crusades were fighting against terrorists who, ideologically speaking, are no different than the FSA, the Free Syrian Army, a terrorist organization who you, Mr. Obama, are supporting. You are giving them weapons. You are giving them guns. So no wonder you hate the Crusades. You hate the Crusades because the Crusades are not some evil, violent people or, 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 or missions. The Crusades goes against everything you stand against, you stand for. The Crusades go against everything you stand for. You stand for Islam. You stand for terrorism. You give terrorists weapons. You give terrorists money. You give them the support they want so they can go out and kill Christians and, and advance Islam. You are advancing Islam. You are using violence to advance Islam and to have Islam expand throughout the Middle East. You are the one who's doing an Islamic jihad on the Middle East. Uh, it just so happens that we now have a Christian militia. And just today it was reported by Al Arabiya, several Christian armed forces will soon join the fight against the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria in an attempt to regain control of their lands in the northern Nineveh plain. And Jacob, who is a member of the political bureau of the Assyrian Democratic Movement, has made it very clear that the objective of, the, of these Christian militias is to retake the Christian lands. This is what he said. He, says, he said, the objective is to liberate their land in Nineveh plain and to take charge of security in these areas afterwards. It sounds like a crusade to me. And is Obama going to fund these Christian militias? No. Why? Because these Christian militias go against everything that Obama believes in. And that is Islamic Jihad. And the reason why you hate the Crusades is because the Crusades fought against men just like you. This is Theodore Shubha. I hope you have enjoyed this message. Hope you have learned something from this message. You just heard some theology. God bless and God be with us.